Yo, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Made Hoops podcast. It's good to be back on the screen again and be bringing you all the latest and greatest in everything here at Made Hoops. I'm your host, Austin Smith, and I'm joined by my good brother, Rob Noonan. As you all know, Rob is a man of many talents, but he's currently our events director here at Made Hoops. And Rob, you've been traveling all across the world. I say world, <laughs> but you've been traveling a lot, brother. And this past month for you has been pretty busy. A bunch of basketball, uh, getting back into the flow of things in a traditional basketball month. You can say that month of April being a pretty heavy month, grassroots basketball wise. But tell us about your month overall, Rob, where you've been and kind of what you've been doing on the basketball scene. So there, there's been a lot from tournaments to circuits to camp agendas to seeing college coaches to doing scouting and just like overall relationship maintenance. Um, we started off with March 25th and 26th. That was the warm up in Arkansas. I then went to Indy for Midwest Mania. The following week was obviously this past week at EYBL session one. Um, next week, I'll go to Charlotte on Thursday for a marquee event. Then I'll go to Pitt Jam Fest. And then I go back to Charlotte for a stellar hoops camp. And then I go to session three of the made hoops spring circuit. So a lot of bouncing around, watching a ton of good basketball, meeting with a ton of good people, meeting up with people who I've known in the past, who I get to see again. I mean, that's always great. And that's might be even better than new relationships is just seeing guys that you've, you know, obviously texted a bunch and being back to the April live period was big. I mean, that was, that was the most exciting part so far of this journey. Right, right. And you talked about an April live period, man. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit deeper. It's, it's one where we kind of got back into a traditional landscape of being a university across the country and having that different feel, especially with the past two years dealing with COVID and everything. But this first live period brought the first EYBL stop. And we know, obviously, man, EYBL is the premier basketball tournament across the country. And everybody was excited to be back in Orlando. Obviously, the Disney World Wild, Disney World Wild Sports venue is amazing. Uh, and you were able to attend. This being the first time kind of in the traditional setting outside of Peace Jam for you. Tell us about your experience overall. And then we'll dive into a little bit of the basics of and details of what you saw specifically during your time in Orlando. So this was obviously, like you said, it was my first official EYBL stop, like a regular traditional stop. I went to Peach Jam last year on the last leg of Peach Jam, where it was like a week and a half and people are just like, oh, my God, when is this over? Um, so the excitement was completely new. Like when you start because I've gone through session one for three circuits so far, and it's like the first day of school and going back to school and stuff like that. So I got to see what Nike does and like how it's like their first day back to school. And like, they were all excited. The coaches were excited, the directors, all that. That was cool. Uh, before I actually said hello to anyone, I went onto the court and just kind of like looked at the branding. I looked at the lighting. I looked at the banners, looked at everything just to see how different it would be. Uh, and, and it was different in that aspect of how they have everything lined up. They had the security, um, you know, the shot clocks behind the hoops they have the scores were off to the side. Um, and I mean, they had security around the score. Key. I mean, it was awesome. Like everything was so separated and organized operationally. So that was like the fun part for me. Um, and then the second part was, you know, meeting coaches, um, especially like one specific one for Kenny Johnson now is at Rhode Island. I hate to see him leave as a camp coach because he was a phenomenal camp coach in Camp Mind. But I'll take him going to Rhode Island. Uh, I'll accept that. So, you know, seeing some college coaches that I haven't seen in a while, uh, probably since July, and then meeting new college coaches and seeing the 2025 class, who was my first class with Made Hoops. Uh, you know, that was, that was my gym. I was like, that was the best part. I was like, forget about the 17 and 16 you. Like, I'm going in the 15 you, like, where I'm relevant. Um, and then I got to catch up on the 2024 class and, and see who's who just obviously because we missed that year with COVID. So that was uh, an overarching synopsis of my first EYBL stop. Good for you, man. I'm glad you were able to partake of that, man, and be able to learn a lot and, and be able to, again, like you mentioned, that 2025 class, uh, be able to check them out. 
um, and see them in action in some of the 2024 guys and just be a part of that in totality. You being the event director, I want to give everybody the correlation. That's why Rob was talking about the branding and everything, because for him, that's something you got to pay attention to. And I love it. I mean, if I know for you, Rob, being detailed as you are, the lie, all that stuff matters. Placement, branding, all those things are, are things are key in and all. So to hear you mention that was pretty dope. Uh, definitely from your perspective as who you are with us here at MADE. So I want to dive into a lot of the content from EYBL session one. Uh, so let's talk about it. Who was, Rob, like some of the better teams or who were some of the better teams that you saw during this past weekend? So if you were to break it down by each age group, I mean, you're looking at Mocan was very impressive. Uh, they obviously went 4-0. The Scholars without McKenzie went 4-0. Mello, and I mean, we talked about this at the middle school level with Fitz and Sam Brand completely transforming that program, and now they're 4-0 at the 17U level. Uh, Florida Rebels and Reese not missing a beat from last year. CP3 still having Dillingham, um, still having Aiden and Gigi. They're obviously 4-0. The family going 4-0, TSF going 3-1, uh, Levon going 3-1, and they actually played each other, and we saw that preview at the warm-up. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much the the totality of, of the 17U. Um, and, and that was a fun – I mean, you had a ton of coaches. Obviously, it wasn't as many coaches as you're used to seeing because you have the transfer portal. You have kids on official visits. But – I mean, you're still about 75% full in the capacity with college coaches. So there were a lot of kids getting opportunities, which is the main thing. Um, so, I mean, now you move down to the 16 u level and you have Mocan again going 3-0. and You have Florida Rebels, and we'll speak on some of their players. That was my first time in person watching Carter Knox. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. He's a bad dude. I, I texted Kevin. I said, this is the first time watching your son. It's a bad dude. Um, CP3, their 2024 class was very good. Uh, and I was just kind of looking at the landscape of the the uh, the wings that they have and the guard play and the potential in the lane. That was all impressive. And, I mean, I think their first game they had, you know, UNC head coach, assistant coach, maybe actually two assistant coaches. Um, they had Duke there. I mean, they had a few guys there that were watching their 16U group. You still had Knight Riders going 3-0, Arizona Unity, welcome to the EYBL or the E16. They went 2-1, and one, and then another good team out of North Carolina right next to CP3 is United, and they've had a tremendous group with, you know, Jackson Prunty, and you had um, Stevenson and Cam Scott. You know, those guys have been doing their thing since eighth grade, and they haven't missed a beat in three years. Um, so they're 3-0. Um, and – Shout out to the scholars going undefeated in three divisions. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of good basketball to be watched. Um, but now I'll, I'll break down the, the 15 U it's your class right now. Let's do it. My class. So <laughs> the scholars adding Darren Peterson was a huge ad. They played Ikenna up um, who's a 2026. They went three, and oh, they were impressive. Um, team wide not with Giovanni Ruff, T Bartlett, um, who else they had Brandon McCoy play up. They had Brandon Martinson play up, who were just in our eighth grade league. They went three, and know, I can't not talk about Maine United and Cooper flag. Yeah. I'm having Facts. I'll, I'll, I'll finish this and then I'll know what question you're going to ask as soon as I finish this. So, I mean, obviously him, you know, Maine United, went from, I mean, just put this overall into perspective. They went from playing in our second division mm -hmm. and made hoops to going three and wow. on the Nike circuit for the E15. Wow. So they had Duke had a head coach and two assistants. Kentucky had an assistant. Baylor had a head coach and assistant. UCF had a head coach. Um, Hawaii had a head coach, um, which Hawaii – I spoke to the Hawaii coach because he was watching Rose city and obviously Rose city has JJ Mandiquit. And I was like, you're probably recruiting like the first Hawaii kid from Hawaii. <laughs> that must be pretty cool. He was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, but go ahead on your Cooper questions now. Cause I know you're, you're waiting for it. No, listen, I, I just, again, got to go into the top players. We can start with Cooper flag. Where have you seen his, 
development grow in the past year? What's been most impressive to you about him in particular? He keeps getting better, and he's been really good, obviously. But, like, those kids, you always look like, okay, like, what's what's their hitch? Like, what's their hiccup? Mm-hmm. And he's just completely just kept going up and up and up. So he was tremendous. I mean, there were some people that were like, yeah, he's the number one player in the country. And they kept watching. And then, like, they would play him, and they would be like, god damn, he's the number one player in the country. <laughs> And then the next coach would be like, yeah, I heard that. He'd be like, God damn, he's the number one player in the country. So there was a lot of that. Um, and I was just going through, you know, even Arizona Unity going 3-0. Uh, they had a really tough win against the Florida Rebels, who the Florida Rebels also have a top five prospect in Jameer Jones. But going back to Arizona Unity, um, Cam Holmes, the brother of Deron Holmes, who we spoke about a ton during the Winter League, he had like five threes or something during that game. Uh, again, an eighth grader playing up. He was really impressive. Um, a peer maker was great. Jayon Pitt. I mean, all these guys that we spoke about last year, for the most part, everyone stayed together. And that was great to see. Like there was no, it was, it was pretty fluid with these teams and who they've had. Um, PSA going three, and zero and having Darius Adams and Omari Moore. And I know I'm forgetting a few others. Um, I didn't get to watch them too in depth, but obviously Dar- Darius has been tremendous and same with Amari. Um, the Knight Riders had had their way. I mean, they they lost one game last year and that was in finale. Uh, and then they come back with Cam Boozer, Caden Boozer, and they had, you know, Duke assistants watching them as well. Same with Baylor. Um, and Alex Lloyd and... Benny Fragella. I mean, there was just a ton of guys there yeah. that they have kept together and, and they made their mark. Uh, take over, having three 2026s play up, them still going 3-0, and New Heights Lightning going 3-0 and where they left off of finale champions with Badara Diakite, Malik Thomas, um, and company. So you got those guys. Mean Streets adding Trey McKenney, still having Melvin Bell and Antonio Munoz. Team United at the 2025 group, they were okay in our winter league, mm-hmm. but we saw the potential. Right. And they added Sadiq White. They still had Chadlin Trailer. They added Zamika Wilkins. They did what they needed to do and it paid off. Yeah. So so now they're they're three and oh. And that's pretty much the whole landscape of the top teams that all went three and oh for the E15. Love it. Love it. Rob, let me ask you this question. And and based upon what you saw, I think you can answer it very, very well. With there being a difference in the number of coaches on the sidelines, right? Obviously, transfer portal, recruiting, all these things have kind of made it lower a little bit, just for a few numbers for college coaches. Did it impact the play at all of players wanting to compete at a high level this past weekend? No, because... One, it's the first time in a while that there's been a spring live period. Two, it's like, it's, it's the most cliche saying of, you never know who's watching. <laughs> so the coaches might not be there, but they could be watching online or doing streaming, or they could have guys like myself or an Andrew Slater or, and I can't even actually know, scratch that. Just put Andrew Slater and not me because he's in a league of his own. Um, but they're asking guys, hey, was this guy that good? And then you text him, and it's like, okay, thanks. Um, and the competitive nature of Nike basketball is just always the same. It's it's the EYBL. You want to get to Peach Jam. So they're working towards winning Peach Jam. And in this day and age with gear, you get a whole nother level of gear once you get to Peach Jam. So yeah. I'm young enough where that's still my drive. So I can only imagine how these kids feel. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Talk to us about some of the notable coaches. You mentioned a bunch of them. You saw some Baylor assistants, Kentucky assistants, UNC, the head coach of, head coach of Hawaii. Uh, you saw a bunch. Who are some other notable coaches that you saw this past weekend? Other notable coaches, I mean. Obviously, we don't want to leave anybody, any school out. But you had pretty much every high major school have one representative there. Yeah. Um, the one thing I liked was you had some guys, obviously there's some movement 
uh, on coaching staffs with guys leaving and stuff like that. Um, so that allows like recruiting assistants or recruiting coordinators or director of operations go up and they get to recruit. So I was like connecting with them. Like, Hey, how do you like, how's it going? Like, how, how do you like this? I mean, this is cool. Obviously you probably didn't get to recruit in the past. Right. Um, but now you can, and there's a specific director of ops who I got to see who was the director of ops at LaSalle. His name's Mike Doyle. And he's cousins with one of my good friends, Ryan Daly, who played at St. Joe's. Um, so I went up to him like, Mike, you're not going to remember me, but we were roommates at hoop group with me, you and Brett Barron, who's at, Oh, he's going to kill me if he watches this because I forget where he's at. He just won a D three national title. So whoever won a D three national title, look it up. That's three coaches. Um, but obviously when we were at hoop group for that week, you like put your stuff down, go every which way and then come back. And he goes, yo, we never spoke but I know I had another roommate and I know it was you. So like we were just connecting. So like, you just get to get those kind of connections. Yeah. And then, you know, I was talking to Emil Jefferson and now he gets the assistant job at Duke. Yeah. So like that stuff is just really cool. I mean, I'd like, I just like seeing these guys succeed and like getting to where they want to go because I know if that was me, I'm like, man, that must be such a good feeling. Right. Wow. Wow. That's that, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about it, Rob is, is, times are changing and even with that you know everybody's still having to adapt it's not just players it's not just AAU coaches it's not just directors it's college coaches too because like you mentioned one big thing is jobs are turning over all right and so with that coaches still have to adjust as well and I think um, I'm, I'm glad that this past weekend still was a success despite everything else that's kind of going on right now and how crazy it is up in the world and you know with basketball and with the landscape of recruiting. So, man, positive stuff for you to say the level of play didn't diminish. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Rob, talk to me about this. Um, you know, you, you see these players in the eighth grade, you know, and now they're E15, right? For what's the biggest advice you can give a prospect given the landscape of the, of the situation regarding recruiting, given that some of these kids are still very young, um, what advice would you give a player just looking to figure out how they can stand out in the midst of a new recruiting landscape? So by the time it could either get better yeah. because you might, there, there's going to be change by the time that they're a freshman to a senior right, or a junior. So there's going to be change. So it's just really a matter of what's going to be that change. Um, they have to stay the course because, you know, you go from eighth grade and, oh, you're the number one player in the country. Okay, well, now you go to freshman and now you're back to square one where you're the smallest fish in the sea. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go all the way up to senior year and you're, okay, you're the number one player in the country. You go to college, small. So, like, you're always getting set back and how are you just staying on course? Right. Um, and there's a ton of good kids and I, and I was following that were in our – made hoops winter circuit last year that were obviously on different teams. You have Coa Pete on Compton magic. You have Bryson Tiller on Atlanta express 16 U. Um, I know LZ Harrington is coming back from an injury. He's obviously with why not um, Terry on Burgess. He's with Arkansas Hawks. So there's a ton of good prospects that I still got to see. They're still doing well, which was happy for me to see um, Caleb Wilson, who's with Anthony Edwards elite. So that's always my thing is like, okay, like I got to see some of the kids, but how are, how are the other kids that I, that I knew doing? Um, so seeing all these kids perform at a high level on every circuit is, is always heartwarming to say the least for me. Cause it's like, oh man, like that was my guy. Like I used to see him every winter and, you know, dab him up and say what's up. And the, the second most exciting part of the spring and that's to, not to get too off topic is seeing who rises up and who's like the next big prospect. And that's not including like the freshman class. Like I'm talking about like the Zayden highs who yeah. just blew up. And I don't know. I can't say I knew too much about him prior to the weekend. I've heard some things, but him skyrocketing um, as well as some other guys. It's like, who's that next guy. Yeah. 
And that's what 15U needs to actually, I can, I can bring this back. So that's what 15U needs to look at is like, you have these guys who were really good, who have stayed good for three years. And then you have guys who maybe fell off a little bit or weren't too known that just jump onto the scene like that. And there's 15 offers. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Last question for you today, Rob, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, any two or three players from the 17 or 16 you, if you had a chance to watch that were stock risers, anybody in on that caught your attention stock risers. So there's one stock riser that wasn't in the EYBL and I'm going to give Eric Hanford credit for this because I never give him cram uh, credit because I don't support him. However, <laughs> however, Eric Hanford is our director of scouting here, man, who's just so y'all know, man, him and Rob have, have interpersonal beef. It's not really beef. We, we always have beef, but <laughs> there is a, I'm finding it right now. And AJ Johnson that plays for Jalen green elite has been, everyone's been like, Oh, he's been blowing up. Hold on. Hold on. I got you. Because again, do I like giving Eric credit? Absolutely not. But. I'm going to show you this. You see it on the screen? So he's like 6'6 six, six now, maybe 6'5". Yeah, I've seen him. Give so him. Eric had him when he was 5'11". Wow. At that Middle is- School Academy. Yeah. So Eric can record this because this is the last time I'm going to give him credit. <laughs> um, but now going back onto my stock risers. That you saw. Obviously biased elijah gertrude hudson catholic new jersey he had like the dunk of the weekend his stock is rising um dwayne pierce for the new york wrens he's always been very very good but still under the radar so his stock is rising for everyone else but for me that was always his expectation um t bartlett at 2025 who played in our league last year he was always on the radar uh he was a little bit slower in the beginning but he took a big jump, like maturity, physically. Um, he looked great this weekend, and I was proud of him for for how he played. Um, Jackson McAndrew from Howard Pulley. I was watching his game, and, I mean, he's a 6'8", stretch four, can play a little bit of the wing, was knocking down a ton of big shots. Um, Carter Bryant for Paul George Elite, 6'8". He's been going through some growing pains um, or shin splints or whatnot, mm-hmm. but kid's going to be a problem. So, I mean, if I were to pick a few of those, actually, no, I'll give you one more. I tweeted about him too. Trenton Burns. Okay. T is a 2024 seven foot Houston hoops. So I was like, I saw him and then I was watching some other kid on his team. And this is before I saw him do anything. And I saw him hit a three and I was like, <laughs> radar. <laughs> Did you just do that? <laughs> I saw him hit another one. And I was like, oh, man, so <laughs> he's real. He was blocking shots. And again, it wasn't anything crazy. But if like someone looks at him and is like, give me a year to work with him, he's going to be a stud. Wow. Uh, wow. So I hope more than one person saw him because he's got a ton of potential. Good deal. Good deal. Everyone. Hey, you all can go uh, follow Rob on Twitter, man, at Noonan Hoops. I uh, want to shout him out. He's always posting a bunch of great stuff, and you can see a lot more in depth from um, some of his stock risers and players that caught his eye early on. So, again, at Noonan Hoops, go check him out, man. He's got a lot of great coverage on there. Go ahead, Rob. Don't forget, I had a great tweet, great timing. <laughs> I have officially peaked on Twitter, getting 1,400 likes for saying the AAU transfer portal is about to be a force all week. I didn't anticipate it. Um I'm pretty excited. Like I even like told my parents, uh, they have no idea. Like they don't even use Twitter. They've never downloaded it, but I told them it's going to go on my resume. In, in, the, in the stash box. Got to put it in the stash box, bro. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's a, that's an entirely crazy topic right there. I mean, that, that that's needs- a whole other yeah. podcast. Yeah. Podcast of his own. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that though in due time. But, but Rob, as always, man, we appreciate you, brother. We're glad you're able to have a good time. And at that first EYBL stop, your official first one, that's not a part of obviously Peace Jam and things like that. But bad for you, man, we appreciate everything you do here at Made. So, man, as always, double, double salute to you. Always appreciate you.
Everyone, thanks for tapping in with Rob and I for today's podcast episode. Make sure you stay in tune with us on social media, Twitter, Instagram. We've got a lot of content coming soon. This was the first EYBL Session 1 recap. Stay tuned because in the coming weeks, we'll have more and more content for you. As always, I'm your main Hoops host. I'm Austin Smith. And my brother that was joined with me today, he is Rob Noonan, our event director for May Hoops. And he does a bit of everything else as well. So, Rob, appreciate you for your time. We look forward to seeing you all soon on the next episode of the Made Hoops podcast.